nor was it something I was embarrassed or ashamed of because mm-hmm. it was a symbol of strength and like yeah. it was almost like a badge of honour that my sister wanted to be like me, which made me feel like a role model and made me feel special. <laughs> and that's going to make me cry. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to laugh it off, guys. Yeah, and um, for me that was like so special and that's transitioned into why I am who I am now. G'day, g'day, and welcome back to another episode of A Lot To Talk About. It is your boy. It is the captain of the ship, the motherfucking man in charge, Bradley J. Driver. You can call me Brad. And I'm excited because today's guest is not only someone that I've wanted to have on the show for a long time, not only someone that's going to be here as a regular from here onwards, but my little sis. Hello. How are you? Very good. Um, Sis is like my best friend for anyone who knows me. Her name is Shania. Um, We are literally two peas in a pod. Um, If you're looking at this, the amount, literally the amount of comments I get on Insta Mm -hmm. about, holy shit, you guys look so alike is insane. We've kind of got like those twin qualities, except I'm a little bit more of an ugly duckling and... um, You just don't have the brains, do you? No, not really. (laughs) That's why I do this stuff. And I still make no money. So um, it's part of the dynamic, but really excited to have Sis on board. Um, you guys, by the time this, coming out, this is coming out, you probably won't have been able to see, but the dynamic of a lot to talk about is shifting. It is less about just me and me interviewing guests about the deep stuff that I like to talk about, but it is becoming a channel or an umbrella for so many other things to, to come underneath it. I want it to be a cultural playground, a place where you can connect with human story, you can connect with sport, you can connect with fashion, what's trending, culture, art, music, and just conversation. And one thing that Sis and I love to do is talk, and we always have a really good laugh and have so many great stories to tell because we spend so much time together. So our show together is going to be like really just super casual and super fun and almost like as if we're not in front of the camera or not behind the mics, but we're just going to have a laugh and share a story and get the audience you guys really engaged through some questions and some funny talking points. So, so good to have you here. It's good to be here. I'm very nervous. I almost feel like running outside. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, <laughs> it's so weird coming into a studio for the first time. Obviously, this is my show, so there's less nerves where I'm, and also I'm nearly at 100 episodes, so I'm so used to this. But mm-hmm. there's something funny about just the minute you sit in front of a mic and you know yeah. that the camera's on, you're like, how am I going to sound? How am I going to look? Um, But you're so good behind camera when you do all your stuff for your social. And I want to give you a little gas up because a small business alert. Small business check. You are doing bloody unreal. So Sis started a business. I'll let you explain it. So, oh wow, firstly, um, you can probably hear my heartbeat through my throat. (laughs) But um, I actually started a very small business recently. It was a hobby turned into something. Oh, there's the mic. There we go. It was a hobby turned into something that I guess had a bit of potential. So um, I make, I guess I would call it giftware, like small resin handmade products. Um, And honestly, (laughs) I kind of laugh at it because I'm like, it sounds like a child's business. But um, I think once people actually see the beautiful products I do make, it makes a bit more sense. It's not really, it's not like a piece of clear plastic. It's quite beautiful and it's something really sweet to gift a loved one or a friend. Mm. That just shows it's a bit more of a thoughtful gesture, I think, having a handmade product. So, um, yeah, hobby turned into a small business. And honestly, I went from getting a couple of orders a week, getting super excited when I get an order to um, overnight pretty quickly turning that number up to 100 something orders, which has been extremely crazy. But I'm so grateful. So um, one of the YouTubers that I watch one of my customers actually shouted out to her when she was looking to support small business. And um, yeah, she kind of did like this small business unboxing on her channel. And from there, I just literally woke up one morning. This was only this week as well, so it's still very surreal to me, but I had 50 orders just the moment I woke up. And since then I've had another 50, 60 orders come through, which is absolutely crazy. What's insane to me is I remember you telling me, because we're like, Anyone who knows us knows that we're like super supportive of what each other do and like always champion each other and our 
fields or our passions and I remember you telling me that like you're gonna make these <laughs> and it kind of come out of the blue for me and I was like the first thing I thought is you didn't really mention small business you were just like I'm gonna start making resin bookmarks and I was kind of yeah. like oh I just thought it was a craft project yeah. and you're like and then I'm gonna sell them and I'm like you know I'm a shit house reader and I'm like I don't know if there's a business for that but like like sweet go for it have a crack the support was there <laughs> Yeah, the support, like the support was there, but I just had no idea. It was so left of field for me. And you're, you're really good. Like one of your best traits in a professional environment is you're really organized. And when you know what you're doing and what needs to be done, you're really good at it. Thank you. But I never really picked you as a small business person because Neither. small business is like you kind of, you're a little bit more risk adverse than I am. Definitely. I'm kind of like throwing my whole fucking life at one thing. I'm like Holy the... shit, that didn't work out. Now I'm fucked and I've got to figure life out again. No. I'm like introvert to a T, like I need yeah. to know my path, I need to know the direction, I need to have like the next five steps planned, ready mm. to go, like I can't take a curveball, so yeah, it's been, yeah, it's, and don't get me wrong, like, I, well there's been plenty, that's what I mean, like yeah. small businesses, all curveballs and all 100%. surprises, and I was a little bit, I thought like obviously the time to try it was lockdown, Definitely. and during COVID, because there's you know more time on your hands and mm-hmm. you're working from home a little bit in your old job mm-hmm. and you know sisters quit a job so more alike in some ways <laughs> cheers cheers oh. to that freedom <laughs> and no both both loved both loved our old employers and yeah um i've taken on some stuff with my old employer just to help pump marketing money back into the platform here but we're both like fully respectful of our um, old jobs yeah and, i think that's just like intervening a little quickly here. yeah go um i think there's like a difference between like feeling happiness towards quitting a job knowing that it's the right move for you but still having that respect for employers and the relationships yeah, that you made but also like I'm grateful because my employer totally understood where I was standing yeah. and just the things that I wanted out of life it just didn't align with what I was doing and I think that's the difference of still being able to express your happiness towards those yeah. decisions but have respect as well yeah so true and I think you know we're both in the same boat there but then hearing you start a small business I was super shocked (laughs) and then even at the start though you like you were kind of like it started small and it did but I was still like I was surprised I was like hold on there's legs for this and the thing about any business is or the thing about any platform it's the same with what I do here in the studio is the beginnings are always exciting because so many people you know and love get behind it and support you but there comes a point in time where everyone's bought your product or everyone's listened yeah. to your show and now it's about engaging new people, building mm-hmm. an audience or building a customer base. And yeah. I was really interested to see how you tackled that challenge. And as anyone in business knows, or you know, most people know generally that marketing is a big part of selling product. Mm-hmm. And you've got no marketing background or no. have had no marketing no. study. But then you just use basic consumer knowledge, which was what do I enjoy watching? Where do I get my tip off on products? Yeah. And you love to watch YouTube and you love to watch vloggers. And all of a sudden you're sending products to like a um, bunch of the guys who listen to this show would know Steve Cook. A bunch of the girls who listen to this show would know Steve's partner, Morgan yeah. Morgan Maroney, who's huge in the fitness space. Nearly a million followers. <laughs> yeah, which this is a massive fan of. I'm a fan of Steve. Yeah. fan of both of them. They're both yeah. incredible. And Morgan's, you know, homegrown Aussie yeah. fitness just queen and... Um, she bought two of your products. She bought literally three. Literally bought three products. Yeah. Then shouts it out. You get a little boost off that. Then you've got the latest girl, Rachel Catherine. You've had a bunch yeah. of other people you've connected with. And I just want to say as a big brother, so proud because to see you innovate and expand and to know that you're only so early in this and there's so much growth to go is so exciting. So it is very yeah, exciting. that's a little gas up for your business, which I'll make sure there's links in this episode Might for you guys to go check that out. Yeah. <laughs> You come where you get a little bit of morale booster. Um, But we're here today not to talk about small business or not to talk about any of that stuff, but just to have a yarn and a laugh and we love to do that. We've been really close since kids. Yeah. I was that fucking annoying brother that was kind of... Very annoying Like always. And not not annoying in the sense that like... Didn't pester me. was like, in a sense, like loved me too much. Yeah, I'm just like... (laughs) like please come and play with me we'd have a fight I remember growing up and we'd have a fight and it was always you having a fight with me not the other way around yeah I'm a Scorpio yeah and then (laughs) 
you'd lock yourself in your room and I'd be so upset that sis was upset with me. Firstly, that... before you say this, I know exactly where you're going with this. Just like picture yourself, Big Bang Theory, Sheldon knocking <laughs> yeah. at Penny's door. Yeah, I'd <laughs> knock at sis's door in her room and be like, love you. And she wouldn't say anything. I'd be like, love you. <laughs> like, sis, please say love you. I'm going to keep knocking on your door until you say love you back. And she'd be like, oh, fine, I love you. And I'm like, thank you. I'd walk away yeah. until she'd forgive me the next day. But we had such a good relationship growing up. Definitely. We kind of done everything and went everywhere together. Yeah. And we were like best friends. We're two and a half years apart. So I'm 25. This is 23 in October, which is scary. Well, October, October now. Today, yep. um, October 30, which is really scary. But I remember one of the funniest stories from our childhood is... I'm nervous because I don't know what stories we're yeah, talking about here. One of the funniest stories <laughs> is so um, we're like super tight as a family. So mum and dad are divorced, as most of you know from listening to the show. But they're still super tight. Their partners are amazing. Everyone gets on. We've got this great family dynamic that I think is, for some people, weird, but extremely healthy and it's how it should be. But I was like six. You would have been like four. Maybe we were even a little bit younger in our house, which we grew up in for the first like 16, 18 years of our life, was um, getting renovated. And so we had this like plasterer there, John, who still is plaster in town. Top Coat is our business. He's, he's such a legend. And John would like give us like plasterboard to draw on and play. So we felt like we were involved every day. And this one particular day, there was heaps going on. We had George the tiler, <laughs> John the plasterer. Mum and dad were like involved in helping a bunch of workers. And we had a two-story house and kind of, we never ever really went downstairs. We had a cinema no. room downstairs, but there was like a spare like bedroom. A self-contained area. Yeah, it was almost like a self-contained flat. It had like a kitchen, it had a bar, it had a cinema room and a bedroom and a bathroom with like an ensuite. And I remember because there was so much going on and they were like redoing the bathroom and the toilets upstairs and tiling. <laughs> Sis was like, I need to go to the toilet. And I was like, I, and she was like, I'm scared to go downstairs. So I took her downstairs and I was waiting for her outside the toilet. And you know, she's a little kid just doing a business. And she might have taken a few minutes, but because like <laughs> we're such precious kids, everyone starts to panic because where the fuck did Brad and Shania go? So like we walk upstairs like five, 10 minutes later and it probably it was probably like a good 10 minutes, right? You took your time and you've like washed your hands and we've walked back upstairs and there's no one in the house. Like I'm talking absolutely no one. It was like we've been abandoned. Yeah. And so... I'm like, where is everyone? So we walk outside and we can hear yelling and screaming. And my nan and pop move next door to us. And we see nan and pop running up and down the driveway. You can see my dad in the distance running through the paddocks yelling out, Brad, Shania, Brad, Shania. There's the plasterers, the tilers, everyone is running around the streets. And I think it was like mum or nan that we seen first. I can't even remember. Like mum's like out the front yelling, like running back in panicked. like, And we just see him we're like, what's going on? And they're like, oh my God, where have you been? And we're like, Shania just went to the toilet. And it was like... It was more so Shania needed to do a poo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shania needed to shit. Um, but it was so funny because it's kind of like, it, it really lends to like who we were as kids and we're so close. Yeah. We've done everything together. And it's like, I wouldn't let sis do anything alone and vice versa. Yeah. And so we just had this such strong connection from kids that has led on to so many funny stories. I like, think just like going on that, just so people actually understand, like I think a lot of siblings say like oh like we're really close and stuff but I think a st like something for me that really shows how much I've always looked up to you especially as a little kid is more so the fact of when I guess we were growing up obviously me being younger I didn't fully grasp mm -hmm. your condition with your CF yeah. and I still like I just like thought Brad was like this hero figure in my life mm -hmm. and it's like, it kind of, it makes me really, really happy to this day to just think, oh God, I'm looking at him, he's yeah. teary, I'm getting teary. I'm getting cry this now. This is bullshit. Um, <laughs> looking away. Um, emotional eyes. So like, I think something really special was that I just always looked up to him. Oh my God, he's I'm an absolute mess. Crying. He's embarrassing. <laughs> <Such> um, <a laughs> <story. laughs> Don't worry, I had my cry this morning. Um, and I would literally copy what brad was doing like i had to be like brad so much so that i was never really a girly girl um like i always had to follow what brad was doing <laughs> and so like brad had to do um a puffer which was for his cf and i used to you know 
walk around with the spare puffer to help him or we do 100 laps around the coffee table (laughs) and then he used to have his enzymes for being able to digest his food and so I'd have to have my Tic Tacs because they looked like enzymes (laughs) but they had to be in a Creon bottle like just Mm. the little things like that is when I look at it now from you know my perspective now versus then I think that was really special because mum and dad also fostered that for us and allowed Mm. us to still feel and it made in a sense that's why I think your CF is so normal for us and it's why we have always had this great outlook with it as a family because mum and dad have always made it such a normal thing and just made us feel so comfortable around it um and so yeah I think that's something really special to share because it's always made me smile when I think about it definitely Um, like here you are having to do these things and I just wanted to be like you and so much so Brad would run around as um, Spider-Man and I'd have to dress in his Batman costume. Yeah, I'll, we were massive Batman fanatics growing up, yeah. but I grew out of the Batman costume <laughs> at one point in time and had the Spider-Man spare one and sis adopted yeah. the Batman costume, which was often worn without, just with the hat, the cape and no top. Oh, yeah. Because you're the biggest tomboy on then the planet. Then Free the Titty. <laughs> yeah. One of the OG free the titties, um, but it's yeah that that story it, may, it may, makes me teary because for me, you know everyone's seen so much about my CF in the last eighteen months, which you know, I feel really privileged to be able to share and to be um, a voice for that community now that has you know has instilled hope for kids and parents with CF mm-hmm. that you know it is an all doom and gloom and I feel really proud of that it's something that personally is a big part of my life, but. That, you know, I speak about it a lot, right? The family relationship. We have the two best parents in the world and yep. it makes me want to cry every time I talk about it because I we, my life would be completely different without them. I would be in hospital probably, in, you know, nine months a year. I've got people see my CF and um, my CF is one of the more severe kinds and I've got liver disease and a bunch of other stuff. But, you know, when you take 50 tablets a day and you've got the problems that I have within my body or the what looks like problems on a sheet. My life should have been a whole lot different to what it is now. And Mm -hmm. I'm just so blessed that they were so dedicated to my health in the early years. And there was their dedication, but there was also you talking about the stuff that you talk about. And for me, it meant that at no stage in my life was CF ever a burden, nor was it something I was embarrassed or ashamed of because Mm -hmm. it was a symbol of strength. And like, it was almost like a badge of honor that, my sister wanted to be like me, which made me feel like a role model and made me feel special. <laughs> and <laughs> that's going to make me cry. Um, I'm just going to laugh it off, guys. Yeah, and um, for me, that was like so special. And that's transitioned into why I am who I am now mm-hmm. and why I do the things that I do. And so I just feel really grateful for the relationship that we've had. Um, I definitely did. I said this is going to be a funny podcast and I'm sitting here tearing up and crying. I think um, that's just like this in a sense tears of joy because hmm, it know, is it is it's it's, so it's made important. for a really special life for me and it's why yeah. i consider it to be such a blessing and um and a great teacher because i've learned so much about myself through what's been a challenge and um a real reminder of how precious life is and how precious these relationships yeah. and um the people that are important to you are so that's why i've got dad mom sis tattooed on the inside of my wrist, a message to them, a message down my back, three tattoos dedicated to them, and that one on the outside of my arm, the statue of Nike, which is their symbol of strength and victory, and that's what this has been for me. So um, we're going to transition into some more fun chats before <laughs> yeah, that's not um, a this is story. like a fucking Adele <laughs> album where I'm just crying my fucking eyes out. But I guess it's like you can see the bond that we've had, and we've had the opportunity to share so many funny times through okay. that where we've always shared like we were really blessed growing up as well a lot of our really close mates had were brothers and sisters who were the same age group and so we spent Either a lot of time I just tagged along yeah exactly but it was, but it was always the same thing and like yeah. really close with all of our cousins and family friends and yeah um as we've gotten older it's so nice that most people lose that relationship we've kept it yeah and we've been able to do all these fun things together and you know we went to the same school and um, a bunch of people in my DMs last night were asking, excuse me, just burnt my coffee up, whoops. Um, <laughs> a bunch of people in my DMs last night were asking for stories to tell and a bunch of it was around travel and one of the trips for me oh God, that is absolutely hilarious is our trip to Italy and Greece with dad. 
So I would have yeah. been 18 at the time. You were 16. Maybe not yet. 15? Not even 16. I, 15 because it was September, yeah. wasn't it? I think I was like just... I think I was honestly about to turn 15. Yeah. Because I can remember being 18 because I was allowed... Yeah, well, then you would have been, because I would have been, if we went in the September, I would have been 14 turning 15. Yeah, and so we went on this trip with Dad, and it was actually, we left on Dad's birthday, so it was kind of like a birthday trip for Dad, and it was our first trip overseas. So super exciting, Um, obviously well before pre-COVID times, seven years ago now. I know. um, Which is crazy to think about. I need to wear a mask. I know, like so crazy, but our first stop was Rome. And Can I just say before we like get into this, if you've ever watched the Griswolds, like people, I was just gonna say people that. <laughs> literally relate to our family as the Griswolds, like like the Chevy Chase just, movies for anyone like, who needs further. Especially reference. just like Dad, Brad and myself together, like there is no worse combo of people to be together, but somehow we just make it work. It's just like organized yeah. chaos. Yeah, like, that's, that's the best, that's way, the to best way to describe it, eh? Organized chaos. I remember getting to Rome after it was like was it two stopovers? And firstly, can we just say that was after a whole of a lot of things. Brad said that he lost my passport. No, that was that was halfway through the trip, I swear. No, it was Oh no, it wasn't. That was it wasn't. Yeah, that's right. So Brad had my passport because Dad didn't think that I was capable of holding my own passport <laughs> at fifteen. So Brad held it for me and then Brad put it into a slot in his backpack and this like honestly I could tell this story for half an hour with all the detail. Yeah. But regardless, Brad apparently checked the whole backpack. We had the plane that was doing a turnaround. Now, I use these terms being an ex-flight attendant. Turnaround is when the plane's already been, like, everyone's off the plane. They're cleaning it and getting it ready to go for the next, you know, lot of passengers. They had people searching up and down the plane for this passport. Brad goes to the counter and goes, oh, I was in the zipper. The very first zipper that we asked him to look in. Yeah. And we found it. So, like, that was just, that was... One. The cleaners were absolutely appalled because that was a disaster for them. But then we finally got to Rome. My bag somehow made its way to, I think it was like Las Vegas. Yeah, like opposite or side LA, of the Or LA, like opposite side of the world. We're in yeah. Rome. So I had to wear the same undies and dad's, shirt for like two dad's, days. Dad's um, Where's Wally t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to borrow one of dad's shirts. Like it was just a disaster. And then like we just had so many fun times. But I remember like the second night... We were, we were sitting in an alleyway in Rome eating dinner and there was this like really outgoing restaurant owner and he comes out and asks us how food was and we're the biggest like bogan eaters, like we're so simple. Yeah. So we were like margarita pizzas and trying to explain to people what a chicken schnitzel was. Like chicken with crumbs, like that's yeah. it, nothing else. Yeah, so <laughs> we're like trying to get that point across so we could just eat simple and be... Firstly, I thought chicken schnitzel was more of like an Italian thing. Turns out it's more like German. It's German, yeah. Yeah, but I always had the assumption, I don't know why, but I just yeah. always thought it was Italian. So I thought that was... She claims the brains, wow. <laughs> I thought I was going there and going to have like this trip of chicken schnitzel. Yeah, <laughs> schnitty trip, um, <laughs> dream time. But... It was like we got there and then this guy was like coming out, asked us how food was. We're like, can you take a photo for us? And he's like, yeah, yeah, of course. And I remember looking at the photo and being like, my hair is like way too long. It's disgusting. <laughs> I've always had short haircuts. My hair right now is the longest it's ever been. And I was like, I need a haircut. And he goes, the Italian guy goes, yeah, you definitely need a haircut, right? So dad goes, after dinner, we'll find a barber. So we're walking around the streets. If you've been to Rome overnight, it's just everything's pumping, right? Midweek. We find this barber shop, and it's really weird, right? There's a lot of like, kind of like Sri Lankan or mm. um, kind of like Pakistani yeah. um, immigrants, like Middle Eastern people, and sort of like um, Southeast Asian people. Is, is Singapore Southeast Asia? Oh, don't ask me. Yeah, like there's a lot of people from from those sort of backgrounds that work and live in Rome, and in fact across a lot of the major cities in Europe, mm. and. They either, I've noticed, they either sell umbrellas or ponchos on the street. Or if your dad, a Ferrari watch. Yeah, or like watches. <laughs> and they're always giving things. Or they like have barbershops and that sort of thing. And we've gone to this barbershop and this Sri Lankan guy owned it. And we go in and dad goes, how much to get Brad's haircut? And he goes, just a haircut. We're like, just a haircut. He goes, 20 euro. Dad's like, perfect. So I sit down. He goes, what do you want? And I'm like... Just a tiny bit off the back and the sides and clean the top up. So, you know, barber starts from the back of your head, so you can't see it. 
<clears throat> I'm just like listening and I just watch so much hair drop off my head and I'm like, holy fuck, that looks like more hair than I've told him to cut off here. Yeah. And I'm talking, it was like the back and sides of my head were like a jar head cut. Like it was so short. It was like a one. Yeah. All over, right? No shape, no blend, no fade. One At this time as well, dad and I are sitting on the lounge, just like kind of watching like, oh, my with the With the camera. Yeah, so we pulled out the camera. Laughing. Because we thought like, well, maybe Brad's asked for that, but regardless, it looks pretty pathetic. So we're just yeah. going to film this and just get some photos as well. They're laughing and I'm like, well, I can't tell him to stop now because what's he going to do? One half of my head <laughs> a one and the other half a two. No, that'd be a disaster. Just keep going. So it does the sides and back so short. He didn't take too much off the top, so I was kind of like pleased with the top. Yeah. And then he goes to me, um, shampoo, conditioner, shave. And I'm like, nah, nah, just 20 euros, standard cut. And he's like, ah, it's all good, I'll look after you. And I'm like, okay, then if it's no more money, like, no worries. (laughs) So I lean back. I've got no beard. I've never been able to grow a beard. I get about three days of growth. I look like a Balinese rice farmer, and that's it. Like, there's no beard or no moustache to shave. He starts like, like buddy, doing my face up with um, shaving cream, gets out a cutthroat, starts to do it. I'm like closing my eyes. He's like lean back, relax. And then it's this point that I'm going to intervene. Yeah. Dad and I like couldn't even speak. Like we couldn't even jump in to help here. Like we were just literally like rolling around this lounge, crying with laughter because we were like, Brad's about to get effed up yeah. and we just can't wait to see this. Like we yeah. just thought it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> So then he starts shaving my forehead and I'm like, I've never grown hair on my forehead, but you know, when you start to shave something, yeah, it begins to grow. It's like, for fuck's sake, I'm going to look like an absolute Frankenstein motherfucker by the end of this trip. And then I'm like, I'm just trying not to look because I'm just so like, I'm so shocked. Then he starts to like, I just hear the clippers again. And I think he's going to adjust like the back of my hairline. He literally starts shaving my eyebrows he literally like i've got some chunky ass caterpillars but he halved them oh, they were like was... pencil drawn like honestly 60 year old chick who can't grow eyebrows anymore hilarious. eyebrows it's like your chick from the 90s film clip mm. eyebrows like like that's that that is why dad and i literally could not get off the chair because we were in hysterics like brad has these thick ass eyebrows yeah. and we've just watched them literally go into like paper thin we were like Holy the best shit. thing too is that <laughs> so it was like because it, we'd come from some pretty nice weather i, I remember before we'd went over there in <laughs> oz so i had a nice tan going on but because part of my heart that half of my eyebrow that's now been uncovered hadn't seen sunlight before <laughs> It was so white and I just looked so fucking weird. So and I remember just thinking, fuck, all the photos are going to be <laughs> fucked up on the trip. And we've got so many funny photos that I can't... We need to find the old files. Probably on your computer, yeah. yeah. Um, but that was just so funny. And then, like, I remember later on in Rome... And I actually wrote about all this stuff in my book, which will be coming out soon, little plug. Um, and <laughs> later on in that Rome trip, that part of Rome, Dad goes... I want to see the Sistine Chapel where that bloke painted the roof, right? Him being super uncultured. And I'm like, even more uncultured at the time. Dad watching Discovery Channel yeah, once. <laughs> Dad watches Discovery Channel once, um, knows all about fucking art. And I'm like, oh, don't worry, that's in Florence. Um, I remember getting the Florence, I think it was next, or no, it was, it was Florence last, was third before yeah. um, Venice, after Amalfi Coast. And I said to the, um, the taxi driver, I go, um, where do we go to see the Sistine Chapel? And he goes, oh, Rome. And dad just looked at me like, you fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> but again, organized chaos. Didn't, yeah. didn't think about this stuff before we went. Didn't think to plan it. But so there's we like, literally, we could sit here for two hours and talk about this trip because we've done that so many times with our family, friends, the Carberries and those sort of people. Yeah. And we laugh every time, but I don't want the whole app to and be consumed by that. And I can't show the photos that. either. So like the photos are what made yeah. it funny. Because like you need the slideshow to accompany it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't want this whole episode just to be a story about that trip. But no. the one last thing I want to say about that is we finished the trip on a cruise ship through oh, the Greek yeah. islands in Croatia. And there's one story <laughs> that I think is the funniest. And oh. it was, we were on the boat and we'd been to this really fancy dinner, which was like one night a week. They were like, um, really fancy dinner. Everyone had to dress in like suits and like, like gowns to get into the restaurant. It was like, it was pretty cool. And I thought I look like the biggest James Bond motherfucker. Looking back, I look like such an idiot. Um, I look like an absolute rookie. 
And um, sis was dressed up all night. She had these heels on. You've never been good in heels, let's admit it. I'm not good on my own two feet, let alone a pair of heels. I'm probably similar. (laughs) I'm lucky I'm not a chick. And we're walking through. They had like this... um, kind of like high-end shop part of the boat where yeah, they were so they like did like a commercial night so yeah. they had like designer brands but for more of a like i guess like a affordable price and so they had these tables set up in the middle of the cruise ship where literally that was the event for the night so everyone that you've met for <laughs> these past week is there and me being like a 15 year old i'm thinking like oh i'm pretty hot stuff here in the hills and i just remember hitting the deck like i don't even know how <laughs> I just, I hit the deck, I slid under the, like a movie, I slid under the tablecloth. And it was table. like the, ta- you know, the tables that are like a makeshift table and they've put like a nice cloth over the top to it make it look classier. It was embarrassing. And sis has slid under it. I can, I've done some stupid things myself in my life. I was never so embarrassed to the, as a human being. Can I just say, he says that, but <clears> how do you think I felt? I'm the one that slid under this table and my dad and brother looked like side eye look at me and just go get up <laughs> and dad actually <laughs> dad actually to put the cherry on top of the cake here or the cherry on top of the sunday i should say literally looks at shania and just kind of pushes her with his nudges, leg like nudges slightly me. more under the table so it was like less obvious <laughs> i've never been so mortified and then i still remember like just from that moment that trip just kind of went like <coughs> south for me like i remember the next night i had this it was like a retro night I had yeah. this fluoro pink mini skirt on. I got into the foyer and I remember it split the seam at the back. I re- I'd completely forgotten about that. Split. I'm in a G-string at 15 in a mini skirt <laughs> with a split seam. <laughs> Honestly, I just I was just like I'm just gonna die. Like I'm yeah. just, I'm just gonna walk away from yeah. this trip now. It was so funny. We we have the Hilarious. best travel stories, which we'll get into a bunch of that. So good. Um, in future on the pod. One thing I want to talk about though is um. We both had a lot of jobs, you in particular. <laughs> um, Shania loves change. Change is I don't love change. Not only I, refreshing, it's very consistent for her. I don't Why? love change, I would say. I'm very, like, I like to be set and I like mm. to have structure. But I just, I hate doing stuff that I'm bored at. Like, I just... I'm, I'm, not, I'm very much the same. Like, honestly, don't know how I'm going to get through uni because I'm already bored of it and I'm only in my first year, so... And to be honest, I went back as a mature age student to be a primary school teacher and don't know if I want to be a primary school teacher. So that'll be interesting. But I think I think there's a real calling for you in small business, but we'll get into that after. Yes. We'll, anyway, and we've already covered that. Change. The one thing I want to do is I want to go from, I want to go from Why? the Why top to the bottom, all of your jobs, okay. right? And I want you to explain those jobs and those positions and okay. we'll rate them from like, um, best to worst and the crisis moments, like one crisis okay. moment yep. from each, because I feel like this will be funny. Okay. So first job. <laughs> first job. I actually, this, this is why I thought I was going to have like this great career path because I worked at Mazda with the most beautiful, beautiful team, mm. um, since I was 14. So a little bit dodgy. Um, but I worked there when I was 14, literally every weekend, every school holidays, every day, the school holidays. I was there and I did work with my mum. She was one of the car sales consultants, but um, I was kind of like the all rounder chick. Like I was receptionist. I was a bit of like admin. I like literally did like coffee making. Like I just did everything there. You were basically like first point of call for anyone who walked in the door. And I learned a lot about myself. I think um, at that job, because a lot of people would always note that I was very mature for my age and I think that Mm. was because I was in this professional environment where I had to be like I couldn't be like every other 14 year old at school like I had to be this professional person but then I did actually go into used car sales after I forgot about this yeah yeah so I had a couple of months in used car sales when I graduated and I was really lucky to have had that job but it just wasn't my calling it's just something that I'm a very open honest person so (laughs) sales (laughs) for me not a go. Um, I'm more of like a, oh, yeah, like you could probably go and buy that car cheaper. Yeah, I agree. Like, mm. wasn't for me. Crisis mode there was um, 18. I also juggled a job at the Hotel Illawarra. <laughs> that was a fucking disaster. So, I, I was so, can I just say, as a big brother, <laughs> your sister tells you she's fresh 18. You went through this, okay, this is contract. Anyone who knows yeah. Shania <laughs> knows that Shania having a drink 
probably more consistent in the last six months. Yeah. Like you've started to enjoy wine and all that a little bit more. I don't yeah. drink because I've got liver disease. I have like half a glass of wine and like I'm over it by yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> but you went through this stage where you were like 18, just on the terps every Saturday night. Yeah. Like those photos where you're like got your tongue out like, ah, <laughs> like just, just, oh, just party mode for a couple of weeks. L- literally, it was probably a couple of weeks. It was literally, I kind of, I'm very fortunate and <laughs> I got it all out in a quick burst. Um, you did. I remember her 18th. I went to your 18th, which was out in town. Yeah. And like being there and just being like a hawk in the back of the club, just looking like if any motherfucker looks at her, <laughs> just like I probably wasn't going to do anything because I was still a skinny little scrawny fuck. But <laughs> if any motherfucker looks at her, I'm fucking raining hell mentally down he on there. there. Yeah, mentally I was there in support. And dad was probably much the same. Dad's the scariest human being you've ever seen and met in your yeah. life. Dad's got... I was too scared to have a boyfriend. Yeah, we always say... I remember Shania's, like, the first guy that, like, come to pick you up for a date. Oh, and Dad God, and I everyone. stood on the balcony and stared at him. I thought, oh, I look so intimidating. Really, it was Dad. <laughs> we always say how chicks have got resting bitch face. Dad's got resting... Nicest bloke on the planet. So nice to everyone. Dad's like the gentle giant. Like, gentle giant. But Dad's got resting want to belt the fuck out of your face. Like, And I think that comes from years of dealing with shit in the police force. Yeah, like years of dealing with shit in the police force. Growing up in Berkeley, which is one of the rougher yeah. areas. <laughs> Not so much now because that's all changed. But back then it was. Yeah. And like him and his brother being the sons of the local police officer being Pop, who was really well respected, but a yeah. whole heap of the criminals who lived in that area at the time, their families hated um, our family and... Dad and Uncle Tez were, like, fucking hardened by that. And yeah. they're just tough guys who don't put up with shit. So it's kind of like they've got that resting, want to belt the fuck out of your face, or Dad does in particular, yeah. which makes him look fucking very intimidating. So I feel makes sorry for any guy that likes Shania. When you're 15. Makes it very hard, and fucking I'm glad it did, because now you've got an so amazing partner. And, I'm glad I didn't have to put up with Dickens. And he's great. I still remember a funny story, and we're jumping so much here, we'll come back to the jobs, but... Funny story, sister's partner, cow. Um, so funny. So who's... firstly, just a backstory to this. Cal and I, so I had the biggest crush on Cal. So he worked at our local Woolies. And I was like, holy moly, this guy is tall, dark and handsome. I will have one of those, please. And I had like this major crush on him, but we were actually just friends because we mutually knew each other through Woolies, but also just through mutual friends. And... Um, I kind of knew Cal for a little while, but then he actually jetted off overseas to do college exchange. Had a girlfriend over there. I was totally respectful of that. Obviously, I don't even think Cal knew who I was properly. And yeah. then I kind of was just like, you know, persistence is key, liking those pics. And then when he got back, <laughs> that didn't work out, double unfortunately. Tap. But fortunately for me, what did work out was he slid into my DMs. And so we kind of started dating secretly because I was like, holy fuck, Cal is six foot four, this muscly ass guy my brother can't know about this and it wasn't because cal's a bad person like cal is literally like nicest play the most innocent like he's just a beautiful soul yeah, he's a great soul and uh, but i was just like brad can't know i've got a boyfriend because he might actually ruin this like too protective and so i remember i snuck cal over to mum's house because at the time i was still living at home with mum brad was living with dad and mum knew like mum knew that we were dating and stuff but I was like, just don't tell Brad until we're ready to tell Brad. And so it was a Sunday and I was oh, like... I was mortified. Like, love mum to bits. And because I haven't lived with mum for ages, like, but mum and I are super close. So we talk on the phone like three times a day. We catch up. It's like not a week that we go by that goes by where we don't catch up in person. And I was like, oh, I'm going to surprise mum for a coffee because I hadn't seen her that week. And so I'll drive over to her house and like call her just when I'm down the road and say, hey, I'm about to rock up for a coffee. And, and I was like, I knew she'd be stoked. And, I was not stoked. <laughs> and I'm driving up the street and my mum's never not been excited to see me. But when I called mum and she's like, hey, darling, how are you? And I'm like, yeah, good. I'm like, hey, I'm just at the bottom of the street. I'll be there in a minute for a coffee. Put the kettle on. Mum's like, oh, oh, OK. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, oh, nothing. And I'm like, mum, you've never not been excited to see me. What the fuck is wrong? And she's like. It was at this moment I get a text from mum. Yeah, Brent. and mum's like, oh, Shania's got a friend here. And I'm like. Oh yeah, nice. And she's like, "Oh, it's a, it's a it's a friend that's a boy." And I'm like, <laughs> "Is it a friend that's a boy or is it a boyfriend?" Mum's and she's back. like, <laughs> and Mum's like, 
oh, they've been seeing each other for a little while. And I'm like, who the fuck is it? And mum goes, <laughs> um, his name's Cal. You wouldn't know him. Mum goes, don't make a scene. Don't, don't come here and make a scene. And I'm like, mum, what's his last name? And then I call dad straight away. I'm like, dad, get on Facebook. Because then I'm driving. Dad's like, who is it? And I'm like, Cal, come McLennan. Dad's searching on Facebook and dad's like, can't find anything. And I'm like, dad wouldn't be able to anyways because he's a fucking Cal, tech idiot. Cal has like, he's the worst in social media. Like yeah. he's just not a social media person. Zero social presence. Um, and like jumps on you, it and Cal. jumps off it. Yeah. But he, <laughs> and I rock up and I'm just thinking, I don't know why. Right. But in my head, I just thought Cal, I'm like just thinking some surfy guy, skinny like little surfer. skinny little surfer, like. Loves, loves a couple of beers with the boys, bit of a larrikin. Probably walk through the door and he goes, you, what's going on or something like that. And I remember walking inside and I'm like looking around, can't see anyone. I walk into the kitchen and mum's like, um, Shania's going to bring Cow down in a minute. <laughs> now be nice. She really likes him. They've been seeing each other for a couple of weeks. And I'm like, why don't dad and I know about this? And she's like, why do you think you and dad don't know about this? I'm like, fair enough. <laughs> So they walk down the stairs and Shania sort of walks down first and she's got cow, she's dragging cow behind her. Yeah. And I'm like, holy fuck, this guy is six foot four, a hundred and something kilos. And literally I'm just like, what the fuck? So he comes over, we end up getting on really good. Like we had a really good laugh. Like, yeah. like, we got on great straight away. And, but I remember still saying it's this when I left, cause he was so big. And I'm yeah. like, at the time cow I was probably, you've been together for what, three years? Three and a half, nearly four. Yeah, nearly four years. So at the time, I'm like 21. And I'm kind of like a baby face. So I feel like I look like, <laughs> I kind of look like I'm 16, 17 still. And I go to sis, yeah, really nice bloke. But when am I getting an invite to his 30th birthday? And <laughs> Shania's like, you're such a fucking asshole. He's six months older than you, you dickhead. Yeah, and I'm like, like yeah, well, he's he's big brother. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, six foot four, fucking big ass looking motherfucker. <laughs> And then, All right, let's not do this because I'm going to hear that from Cal for like the next week. Yeah. Whenever he gets a compliment, he uses it against me for like a good two yeah. months. So yeah. Cal, yeah. there you go. There's but we, we get on amazing now. But yeah, that's kind of, that's why sis has only yeah. really ever had one proper boyfriend. And, yeah. Um, yeah, we get on great. But back to your job. So yes. okay. you transition Illawarra. I hated it because I'm like, I yeah. hate the idea of my sister being around fucking dickheads and being and late at night. And it was like, it was just... Like, it was just a shit job. Like, and I put it my hat, like my hat goes off to anyone that works in a bar because as a young girl dealing with dickheads in a bar that are drunk, it's just not me. And like, for someone that just doesn't like tolerating shit either. And I hate, like, I'm the worst person, but I hate drunk people around me and I'll be the first to admit it. Mm. And Brad knows that, like, I get so cranky. And so I just like, that lasted probably two months, but I was juggling that while I was working full time at Mazda and then I decided to follow my brother's footsteps and do real estate and I was like yeah I might as well give it a go pretty much used Brad's certificate coursework and pretty much yep got my certificate pretty quickly I would say <laughs> um <laughs> but I actually jumped on board with one team and it wasn't I guess the best part for me there he just was really busy great team mm. just didn't have the capacity to teach someone that was very very new to the industry needed someone more that had their feet understood where to go and what to do um but then I actually jumped ship to another real estate after that so that was after about a month I kind of did a trial and didn't love it there but at this real estate um look I stay respectful to a lot of people but this one really like I guess I would say treated like, you like a piece of shit yeah basically. and I think to like I don't like swearing as much as Brad but I would say it really fucked up a career path that I could have enjoyed in real mm. estate because it gave me a perception that I just hated the industry. Um, the people there, there were some beautiful people that I still have great relationships with, but there was, like Brett said, there were some people that treated me like shit. And that was when I just was like, at this time as well in my life, um, coming towards the end of the 12 months that I was there, that was when I started to actually date Cal and he was very such a positive influence on me he's someone that's very like takes an opportunity leaps at opportunity um very different to me in that sense where i was used to being kind of grounded or didn't more risk adverse yeah and so cal actually encouraged me i was kind of going already when i met cal i was kind of going through the hoops of becoming a flight attendant and when i met cal i was kind of like oh like maybe this could be hard like i've just met someone i really like um and then I kind of had to put in a day's annual leave to go for an interview, which was pretty much 
the start of my career as a flight attendant and at the time that agency they were just absolute assholes so that's when I was like no nah, fuck this chuck my resignation in firstly never seen you so unhappy yeah, like I would cry myself to work every day. I would mm. cry myself home, like which is just... family. That sucks. Like when we speak yeah. so often, and you call me and in the I morning, put on you're a crying. Lot of weight, like I, I don't think people understand, but I actually put on like fourteen kilos at this stage. I think of my we're. Life. T- are we stress eaters? Because I was oh, the yeah, biggest I'm... I've ever been yeah. in real estate. I was like nearly ninety yeah. kilos, and I'm 77, 78 now, which is yeah. insane. And can I just say, like, so I think that's really important as well to recognize, like just for anyone listening that's maybe in a rut with their own career like if you're unhappy and you're seeing these symptoms in yourself like just take the leap of faith because honestly I didn't at this time know if I was actually going to be a flight attendant I hadn't had any confirmation but I was like fuck this I put in 14 kilos I cry myself to and from work every day and I was literally spending pretty much my whole wage on personal training because I felt so insecure in my own body and that's something that I've always had trouble with, um, you know, growing up in an age of social media, but... Mm. You're so fit now, though. Okay, maybe. Lockdown's maybe thrown a bit of a curveball there, but... um, Yeah, but you're like, you're heaps fit. I'm healthy. Like, you don't fluctuate. You've got like solid anchors with training and health and fitness that are consistent. And I think that's really, you know, that's... We're not body shaming here by any means either, Mm -hmm. but... I think as, as human beings, we've got an obligation to be respectful of our body and, yeah. you know, your body is the home and the temple that you have to live in Definitely. for the rest of your life. I'm super aware of that because of CF. You're super aware of that because of my CF. Yeah. And I think you've got to, you know, we feel so much better when you look after your health and, you know. Yeah, and it's not necessarily like you don't have to be a measurement, of, you know, a number on the scale. Yeah. It's just you have to feel good in your body. And if you're you not, do. like, don't get me wrong, I'm the worst snack eater like i eat oh, we're so the biggest much. sweet tooth there's a fucking like, if you're watching this you'd say i just took a nibble out of the like, coffee caramel anything. slice at cisco when she got here like but i think that's there's a difference to recognizing when you're treating your body like shit mm. and when you need to step up and do something for yourself because if you're not nurturing yourself like you're literally limiting so many aspects of your own life definitely um but anyway getting back on topic again so yeah i've Fast forward a few months, I was a flight attendant for Jetstar, which I loved. I had an absolute ball, but um, it kind of got a bit hard for me. So we live obviously in Wollongong. The closest major airport is Sydney. So it's about an hour and a half. And it just got really hard for me because with Jetstar, it was a casual contract. So it meant you were still technically full-time hours and you'd work up to 16 days a month because of the, um, I guess, like the rest days and stuff like that you needed with fatigue and whatnot. But it kind of got hard because I was driving so much that it almost was like I was more so driving than I was working. Yeah. Um, And then an opportunity with Virgin Australia came up, which was full-time contract, much, much better incentives for me being, I guess, further from the airport than most. And um, I honestly, that would be my absolute favorite career I've ever had and I think the only reason I kind of quit in the end was um it started to get a little bit hectic um in the sense that I kind of structured my roster so I had pretty much five days away at a time and I would come home on a Friday night which was a curfew chaser we would call it and it would mean that we would actually land right on pretty much 11 o'clock um p.m and then we would virtually have to get everyone off board, do what we needed to do. So I wasn't really in my car until around midnight, getting home around 2, 2.30 in the morning, depending. Mm. Um, and then, and I say that, like you're probably thinking it's a long time, but I mean like actually you get out of the plane at around midnight, then you've got to get on a bus, go through the car park, mm, do hectic. all the loops. It's a whole thing to be a flight attendant. Um And I really missed my family. Like, Cal and I were kind of a couple years into our relationship at this point. And it got hard. Like, I was just never home. I was away pretty much 90% of my week. Um, And that was my crisis mode there. Like, I was also getting quite sick. So I actually had wisdom teeth coming out. And that was causing a whole lot of pain on, like, takeoff. And, like, so... Yeah, high pressure. Yeah, like, the pressure coming down, like, on descent and stuff like that. And so I actually had to take some time off and I kind of reevaluated during that time. And I was like, I think I'm ready to kind of find something closer to home. Um, and I'm thankful 
that I had that experience and it's not to say I would never go back to it and I I say that with a bit of a smile because I think I'm so excited about life that if I actually had an opportunity where we lived closer to an airport I'd probably Mm. would give it a go again you're not fucking leaving but um yeah like it was really fun and I think I get a lot of questions about that actually if that's one that's probably the most common question I get when I'm talking to people about my careers is was it fun to be a flight attendant and I honestly say 100% 100% and I yeah. recommend and you made some great friends like one oh, of your best friends Mel yeah shout out to you Mel <laughs> Mel's always a massive supporter of she us she is the most beautiful person and honestly I'm so grateful because that was like a huge leap for me to be a flight attendant like I'm not that person usually like I'm not yeah. that and like don't get me wrong I was that person that like everyone would be going out for like crew drinks and dinners and stuff I'd find the closest gym, go do a gym session, then sit and watch Netflix in my room. And ha- I'd literally meal prep every trip. I had, like, my own esky, had, yeah. like, all my meals prepped. And that was me. Like, I was saving so much money because my overnight allowances that weren't taxed, that was virtually just, like, a whole savings, savings check yeah, for me. Which is mad. So, it's just, like, it's an amazing career. And I think, like, if you've got your, you know, if you've got that opportunity, 100%, 100% take it. But crisis mode for me was i was like i really miss my family and for sure we're very family orientated as you can hear and then obviously you transition back into real estate with a crew that you love and get on really good with and have created great friendships and i guess to kind of almost wrap that up for you you just wanted to focus on uni and focus on your small business now definitely and i think it just got to the point where like um if you guys have me on Instagram or YouTube. I have a very, very small following. But um, I speak a little bit about that I have anxiety. Um, and I don't have anxiety, like, towards everything. It's just, diff- like, I guess, specific parts of my life that I feel anxious. But, um, yeah, I think that was the hardest part for me was I was getting really overwhelmed with trying to balance everything. And I just knew that wasn't my career path and I couldn't give them what they needed. Mm. And I just felt like it was my time to hand in my notice and do my own thing for a little while. Definitely. I just noticed mum's calling you. Let's call mum quickly, put her on speaker and tell her she's on the pod. Just so she can say what she needs to say. She tried to FaceTime me, so... Let's see if she answers. Hey, how you going? Good. Hey, you're in the middle of a podcast. Sissy and I are on the podcast. You're on the mic, so don't say anything you don't want the world to hear. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Um, do you need to tell sis anything? I like the little angel no. voice she puts on. <laughs> do you need to tell sis anything? No, all good. All right, say hello to everyone. And yes, mum will do no, your nails everybody. tonight. All right, Shania said she'll do your nails tonight. Bye-bye. Bye, love ya. <laughs> Mum's too She's cute. so funny. Um, she like puts on this like, little like... Little angel voice. Yeah, like, like, hello, my mum. <laughs> um... Yeah, and I guess for you now, you're doing things that you're really excited yeah. about, which is great to see. Yeah. Um, what I want to do is like dive into maybe like almost making a few um, statements about each other and stuff that like we think we're both shit at and good at. Okay, yeah, I can do this. I feel like this can be funny. So yeah. like um, you can start by putting what's No, one... you start. You set the boundary because I might just rip sh- like shreds off you. Okay, okay. I feel I feel like we can go because our relationship is so good it's not going to matter anyways. Yeah. I won't cry um, myself home or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like my biggest criticism for you, my biggest pet peeve about you, is when, you, when you're like complaining or something or about something or whinging about something. Often. And I try to like give you some sort of reason as to why like maybe you're in the wrong. I already know where this is going. And you no, go, I don't you take go, it. You go, oh, yeah, whatever. I've got to go. I'm busy. And you hang up every time. <laughs> I hate when people be reasonable when yeah. I just want to, like, whinge. Like, Callum does the same. And I'm yeah. like, don't give me logic right now. Like, yeah. just agree and nod. Yeah. Like, that's what I need you to smile do. Smile away, right boy. Smile away. <laughs> um, okay. So, we're starting there, are we? Um, no, one thing I'll say is then I'll go, I'll give you your positive comment. And then you can rip the shit out of me and lift me back up. Is I think you're, like, you're incredibly incredibly loyal and like grounded and like so amazing with the relationships you have where you really nurture them and like you're great at that as a sister as a daughter for mum and dad and then also as a partner for cow and a friend for your friends so i think it's something you're amazing at thank you um i feel fucking slack trying to rip shreds off you um okay something you're really really shit at is 
and you probably like it's not really nasty but you are the like the messiest person i know and i didn't expect that really have a look at your studio there's shit everywhere (laughs) i can't even like i go over to brad's and like he has his own bathroom and there's just shit everywhere like you've got like your portable razor out the soaps everywhere like it just does my absolute tits in and i'm such a clean freak like poor callum like i vacuum like the couch next to his head because like yeah. i can't stand if it's got a you are very I, I hate fucking cleaning like i'm the opposite i'm like literally always got the dice in my hand but i feel like i'm not a, like i'm not a dirt like i take a like, lot of pride in like <laughs> he's not a dirty person. okay i'll fix this up then he's not a dirty person he just has like organized chaos again. That's yeah. there's that term. Yeah. Organized chaos where it's not like dirty, like he doesn't leave like dishes and shit out. But yeah, it's I'm just really like, good with that stuff. Yeah, but. it's just like he just leaves a mess and just like walks over and does something else. And I'm like mm. that like for me I'm like I have to like I can't even sit down and eat dinner without cleaning the kitchen first yeah. and only having the You're so dirty. like mum and dad. Mum and dad yeah. are so like that. I'm just so the that's complete that. opposite. But it's not too bad, like, for any girls that like you. He's not dirty. He's just... <laughs> Don't worry, you have to go through me first, so... Yeah. Um, okay. I'll there do the go. screening process. That's um, actually worse than what I am with her, by the way. <laughs> no. Um, and then the positive is very similar to what you said about me. You're very... Um, I don't want to say use the same word, like, nurturing, but I guess... You, so I feel like I'm saying the same thing, but I don't want to say the same thing. You just really, like, I don't know what, the, like, you have these positive influences on people. I think that's the best way to put it. Positive influence because everyone that you're friends with, and I've noticed this a lot through lockdown, where we go on a couple of, well, we've been on quite a few walks together through lockdown. Yeah. And I just notice how many people you actually know, and it's like you might just know them to say hello to, but everyone that you say hello to they have like a positive reaction to you it's not like people like there's just no one that i know that doesn't like you and i think it's not that you know them personally or on a deep level it's just that they just get these like this genuine i guess reaction every time like everyone's just so happy to always see you they stop they say hello and i think that's really special because in our day and age everything's online like no one is really great with like face-to-face communication these days and like meeting new people and I just I take like my hat goes off to you because I'm not that person like I'm not someone to just randomly start this new friend group or like to Mm. get these new friends and you've done so much of that yeah I guess for me I'm like one of the because I'm so social and I'm out and about and I chat to a lot of people and I'm I'm really outgoing and confident that's that positive influence as well like people get that vibe and they go yeah we but really some like, like our pop has always said and like dad's always reinforced it um because it was his father when we talk about pop is it doesn't hurt to be nice to people and i feel like no. we're always like we've learned that that like you don't treat someone like an asshole unless they've no. given you a reason um or treated yeah. you like that and um even when people treat us like that i feel like we're still really compassionate and we're kind of you're probably more so than me. Yeah, you're, I'm definitely more so I'm than a bit more like, and I don't mean to be, but I'm a bit more of like a bitch when it comes to stuff like that. Like if we're walking along the cycleway, like I'll smile at people, but I don't take the time to say hello. And it's not that I don't want to, it's just I'm a very... You're, intro- you're not a bitch, you're no, just introverted. it's just, yeah, I'm introverted, but it's like everyone that you have a connection with that I've seen you have that connection with, everyone's so happy to see you, like a big smile's on their face. And it's just, it's refreshing because you don't see that a lot these days i appreciate that and i love that it's, it's something i do yeah. love about myself take a little pride in that so yeah and i think that goes to show your podcast as well like yeah you get these big personalities and these small personalities like not small but like smaller followings yeah. Grow, you know earlier yeah. stage career yeah. and you get them because people go like they might not know you but they go this guy's got a great vibe like yeah yeah i've been really lucky yeah. with that so yeah, that was long-winded hard work um <laughs> One thing I want to do is like throw out a few like so pick a topic and then it's kind of like it's kind of like a trend that goes on social and I know it's like a lot of like best friends or like partners will do it in relationships but I think like a little sibling twist on it would be cool where like we pick a topic mm-hmm. and then um, we have to say like I'll say Brad you say Shania on who we think will do that best or get there first or vice versa. Okay, yeah, you know so it's I mean? like kind of just like who you think so is like, better or. Um, yeah. So like if I said so like example, mom's favorite, um, Brad. 
Mom is so compassionate towards <laughs> towards me. Like I'm like I'm kind of like the baby of the family, eh? Yeah. Like I get all the sympathy. Yeah. Which is because sis is probably just a whole lot more mature than me, and like. I think it's more so just like, I don't know. Like you're a bit of a mama's boy. Like mum. Like be, I think it's because like I kind of lived with mum for so long, yeah. being the younger sibling. Like. I think she was like, she saw all my shit. And so mm. she's kind of just like, she was there. When I'm I, the angel. Yeah. Brad's the angel in mum's eyes. Okay. So we'll go, um, most addictive personality. Brad. Me. Um, you can throw one out. Oh, she, I can't do these things. You I'll, just go, say. I'll go another one. First one to get married. Shania. I hope so. <laughs> Cow. Cow. Little hit. <laughs> um, first one to, first one to start a family. Shania. Shania. Yeah. I feel like you've got me covered in that field. Oh, I, like I don't I'm know. Ba- I'm bad with that stuff. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not throwing any subtle hints out. Yeah, but you've been like, you're, you're nearly four years into a relationship. I've never been in a long-term relationship. Not because I don't want to be. Yeah, I think it's, I gotta know. I don't think you have to be. Like, these days things are changing. Like, people don't need to be married. Like, I think everyone thinks they still need to be married to have kids and stuff yeah. like that. And I think it's such a new day and age. Like everyone's just doing things when they're ready and i think that's really cool like there's yeah, just there's so definitely. many new dynamics now and i think that's awesome brings a bit more normality to life no like and that's something i struggle in actually is trying to i feel like i need to have my life structured and i'm also kind of like just go with the flow like i'm trying to learn yeah, how to go we're with both the flow. similar to that okay let's keep going so we don't get distracted again um best dog parent shania shania you've got me covered <laughs> i feel like i'm I'm kind of that parent that really loves their child, but is so busy. Doesn't like doing the actual dad part. No, I don't mind the actual dad part. I'm just like, I'm so busy and I'm less, like, you're home more than I am. Yeah. Like, I'm always, like, out doing something, always always in the studio. And also because Hunter's got his incredible grandparents, dad and Karen, Nanny Karen. <laughs> so as we call him, Poppy and Nanny Karen. Um... He's like, he loves his grandparents, his nan yeah. and pop. And like, I feel like, because I'm so busy all the time, they do a whole heap of the parenting role too. They're great grandparents. So. <laughs> Here we are talking about our dogs like their yeah, kids because like they actually kids. are. Um, first one to like, okay, who would be the first to move country? I think, okay, this is a hard one. Ready? We'll go in three, two, one, and then we'll say it and then okay. explain. Three, two, one, Brad. me. Yeah. I think because as much as I really want to, I think that's something Cal and I both would love to experience together. I'm also very like, very scared of that. And that comes a lot with my anxiety. Like I'm very, very scared to ever take that step because for me, and you'd be very similar in your reasoning, I know this, for us families, everything. Yeah. But I'm also someone that's like with anxiety and just with my mind and how I need things Mm. structured. I'm also like, what happens if I move? <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. But I'm like, what happens if I move and I get sick? Like, where's the closest hospital? Like, will I, will I like my doctor? Because I hate doctors. Yeah. Like, you think... You I think, think very logically. Yeah, very logically. That's yeah. the word. Um, I mean, you're a bit more, like, spontaneous. Heaps spontaneous. Not me. Um, I'd like to be. I'm trying to be. Most likely to be famous. Three, Brad. two, one, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. I think you... See, here's the thing, right? I feel like I'm doing... And I don't, like, neither of us, like, strive for fame, but I think there's something cool no. about when you've got a a whole world of people who are invested in what you do because I feel like when your intent's good and your nature's really good, yeah. that's powerful, right? And for me, as someone you who wants like to change people's community. lives, um, the more people's lives I get to change and the more yeah. positive influence I can have, that's really exciting, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's – you're kind of like the hidden superstar, right? Where, like, you've done less in, like, a space that would get yeah. attention. But I remember, like, like even you with your little business, the minute that you picked up a vlog camera for YouTube, the minute that you jumped behind the mic here today, it's like everything comes so naturally to you without you thinking about it. Yeah. And I think that, like, in many ways, you just, I, I don't know, there's just something about it where I feel like you could be doing some really exciting things, so... I'd love to. Maybe um, we'll agree to disagree on that. Yeah. Um, anything else you'd like to throw in the room? In re- in regards to that, or just... Um, like, new one. Okay, new cool. I was like, not really. It's a bit awkward. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to be a star, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, better singer. 
Three, two, one, me. <laughs> I just waited for that. I'm, 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 I can't sing for shit and he can he, but I catch him all the time. Oh, I'm fucking, and I'm he, right about he's, it. he's great. I'm fucking when we good. When go for a drive, he's like, <laughs> you know like, what's okay, funny? Okay, okay, this. okay. I get I embarrassed remember, for him. Can I, can I tell something? Oh, I'll be really go. honest here. Guitar. No, okay. Oh. So we both kind of played guitar growing up. We we'll both shit at it. But I remember when I tried to pick it back up again. So I was probably like 14, 15. Yeah. And my mate Ben and I, who were mates since we're four, we're still mates to this day. Ben's got a little business down in Melbourne, sucker. Shout out to Benny boy. And we were both playing guitar. Ben and just Ben and Rachel. So Rachel was one of Shania's best friends. Since prep. Since prep, both like so brothers and sisters, same ages. And it was so funny because <laughs> you were like, you and Rach started hanging out again when they come back from Thailand. They lived yeah. in Thailand for a couple of years, or a year or two. Yeah. And they come back and Ben was like, I play guitar. And I'm like, sick, I play guitar. So we start going around to Ben's house to jam. <coughs> and this one day I just go to Ben, <coughs> hey, do you want to go down to like the local village? There's like Kiraville village, which had like a bunch of, bunch of shops and cafes and grocery shops. Where and all I was like, the and we'll just, students yeah, go. <laughs> and we'll just busk. And he's like, yeah, why not? We literally made 50 bucks in like half an hour. Um, and like half of that was the fact that dad drove me over there and was like, go and give your brother these coins. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not going over there. Yeah. Well, I think it was pity cash because we weren't all that it good. It was definitely pity cash. But it got to the point where it was like, we just got sick of playing songs that we kind of knew that like, I'm just going to start singing. And so I was kind of like, then we got Reese in who had, sorry Reese, but you had no musical talent whatsoever, <laughs> who bought a bongo drum to start pattering along. And then I remember sitting at home and being like, like we'd really add an element to this if I could sing. And I remember trying to learn a team on the guitar in front of the computer at home when I was by myself. And I kind of started singing. I was like, oh my God, I think I'm actually all right. But it was just, I don't know if it was the acoustics in the room yeah. or it was being drowned out by the guitar or Ed Sheeran actually singing and playing a team back yeah. through the screen. That fooled me because I'm not a good singer. Yeah, I think that's When you're in the complex. shower, I feel like sometimes when you're in the shower or you, when you're in the car, yeah. do you ever, I do this thing where I'm in the car and I'll be like jamming along to a song and I'm like, I'm in the flow <laughs> and I'm like going, down, going like and I'm like, the, volume. the volume's high and I'm like singing and I'm just like in the middle of this chorus when I feel like I'm, I'm hitting <laughs> notes, I'm just going to mute it and see what I sound like and I'm always appalled. <laughs> And how but fucking bad I am. I will be first to admit, and I'm sure everyone else listening has been through this as well. When you're little and you think you're a good singer, so you pick up voice memos on your old iPhone, you're like, ah. Yeah. You're like, holy fuck, that's bad. Listen back to tracks <laughs> dropped on SoundCloud. Delete that, hopefully it doesn't save to cloud. Yeah. Um, who's a more athletic? You. Do you think? 100%. But I feel like you're, um, say, say in comparison you're to body dedicated. weight, you're stronger. Yeah, You'd be stronger. stronger if you're like, <laughs> if, if you look at um, like in a compa- comparison to body weight, <laughs> you also have done jujitsu, um, yeah. like martial art. And I'm key. just more dedicated to one thing, Brad which just, is running. Brad just likes the one kilo kettlebell. Yeah. <laughs> no. Just the baby weights. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think I'm just more dedicated to one thing. Yeah. I think you're more like sporty though. Like you have dedicated a lot more time in your life to sport where mm. I've been kind of just like a mum and dad would make me play a sport like I would just go and play Oz Tag yeah. and I've just been competitive fortunate. though competitive yeah. nature is like crazy yeah 100% and that's totally from dad yeah dad like, is super competitive we would so we grew up right mum was always like mum would make you would be two years old and mum would make out she'd be in a race if we were four or five yeah. or six dad would fucking put 10 seconds on you over 100 meters. Even like cricket in the backyard. Like hates to lose. Cricket in the backyard was like dad would like hit a six and would just still be counting his runs while yeah. we're trying to find the ball in the paddock. Like, yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember we used to go, we had this family tradition and it still lasts on mum's side of the family. We go to the Botanic Gardens every <laughs> Easter and we'd often play like cricket coming out of summer season, you know. Or we play footy or something. In this one year, we had this mass cricket game go on. The whole family's yeah. there. Dad's dad's the opening batsman, literally for like, doesn't care. All the aunties and uncles there, all the kids are there. Dad's batted through an hour. No one's got him like, out. He's hitting sixes. He's hitting boundaries. He's running singles. Yeah. He's quick as. And like, I'm bowling. And I remember just thinking, oh, I just want to get him out so bad. And I think he <laughs> threw me a little bone and just like chipped that up in the air. And I got under it and I've caught it and I was so stoked. I've done like this, 
over enthusiastic underarm like peg of the ball like in celebration and there was this i don't even know whose baby it was it was yeah, a random was like, baby totally that one of the aunties baby. was babysitting and the tennis ball was fucking flown out of my hand a little bit premature and clocked this baby straight in the noggin knocked it over onto its ass and it starts howling oh. and it's probably like two not even so funny maybe one and i was like <laughs> my auntie at the time was like oh my god like what did you do that for and just like the baby was fine dramatic. but very dramatic but yeah um but so yeah. many good memories like that so much. um i guess we'll kind of wrap it up here right yeah. it's probably coming to its natural conclusion we'll be going for a little over an hour hour and ten but moving forward this show is all about having a laugh being relaxed engaging with you guys the people that support the show and make this really exciting and fun to be a part of so we'd love to hear your feedback, what you liked, what you hated, whether I'm a dickhead, Shania's a dickhead, or whether you loved us both. Don't tell me, I'll cry. Um, yeah. I'm soft. <laughs> um, just like give us some feedback on what you'd like to hear more of. What we'll probably do as the umbrella of a lot to talk about expands as a channel. Um, we'll have a few guests that pop on for little segments throughout this in the studio as lockdown relieves and we can start to have people in here and fill this space up and just engage with you guys, the audience, and make this... Something that's really fun. I think we'd want to talk about some trending topics. We both like making content yeah. and we're both invested in what people are doing in that field. Maybe it's a space where we do that. We talk about what's happening on YouTube, what's happening in um, the, those sort of connect, cre- creative and sort of connective yeah. um, creator sort of spaces. Even little things I think could be really cool um, from my perspective is if you have a small business, like... DM mm. us, like let us know if 100%. you want to shout out. Little and, gas ups or... Because, yeah, it makes like, I've personally seen how crazy a shout out for a small business yeah. can actually take it from a small business to almost... Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do a little small business shout yeah. out at the end of every episode. That's It's really cool. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. I think that's important. Alrighty. Any closing words from you? Um, no, it was fun. I feel like I was a bit all over the shop, but yeah, we'll definitely get some structure to we'll it. We'll get some structure. This but we you didn't know even, me now. We kind of thought about doing this as a pilot and just yeah. like just testing it, but I think we'll just put this out. It was yeah. heaps of fun and a few laugh, few bits of laughter, a few yeah. tears. Um, so without further to do, or further ado, I think it is a lot to talk about. Um, the channel, it's the cat tuning out, sissy as we call her. As you guys can call her, everyone calls her sissy, who knows a while, <laughs> or possum. Um, thank you for being here. Love you, you. And looking forward to the next one. Sounds good. Just a quick disclaimer. If I've got a lazy eye, it is totally normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she she grew up with a pirate patch over her eye and has a lazy eye. So don't be alarmed. She's looking at you, not away from you. <laughs> All right. Catch you guys. See you.